So we're starting right from the beginning. This is a made up trainee named Joey who's doing training at home with his mom. He's starting with the 30 minute sitting, five minute break after success. That's where we always start. So it's 7.30 a.m., Joey just got up, he's on the toilet. Um, mom's setting a 30 minute timer while Joey's listening to music with headphones on the toilet. So the listening to music with headphones was one of the things mom identified that would probably keep Joey on the toilet. It's something he likes to do, kind of keeps him calm and relaxed, and it's maybe something he doesn't do all the time. It's kind of cool, kind of different. So he's sitting on the toilet with uh, headphones listening to music. 7.41 a.m., Joey pees in the toilet. Hooray! So that's his first success of the day, his first success of phase one. Mom's going to deliver her reinforcer immediately. She already knew what she was going to give. It's the best thing she's got. You always start with the best stuff. Um, and then right after that, so Joey, again, like Pat talked about this before, right? Reinforcers can't be in another room. They can't be, you have to go into the kitchen and get the ice cream. It's in the bathroom. And as soon as the pee finishes leaving Joey's body, his mom presents the reinforcer. It's in front of his face at the same time the pee just ended. That's the only way to be sure that's what you're gonna reinforce. You're teaching Joey, that's what we want. Good job. Um, so Joey gets his reinforcer and then immediately gets a five minute break. So mom's gonna set her five minute timer and give Joey a five minute break from the toilet to do what he wants. He can get up, leave the bathroom, enjoy his reinforcer, chill out, move around, etc but she's still gonna watch really closely in case of accidents. Remember I was saying earlier, this is very labor intensive. It feels like when you're doing this training procedure, the moment after the child pee, you think they get a break. I get a break, cool. You don't get a break. This is not a break for you, it's a break for them. So you have to watch really closely for accidents because we need to react to every instance of, of pee or poop, whether it's in the toilet or not. Our reaction and what we do is what teaches the learner what what they're supposed to do so we have to be ready to react constantly and it, it seems nuts it seems crazy that they could pee and then within you know five minutes they could have an accident again that's how much liquid they're drinking right so you've got to be on by by break we don't mean a break for the trainer we mean a break for the trainee right the person who's learning okay so if you look at your data sheet, what you see on your screen here is an example of, like I mentioned, I'm just gonna show you again. Remember, Joey had his first pee at 7.41 a.m. This is what mom marked on her data sheet. You can see at the top it says this is a phase one data sheet. So this data sheet is just for this first little part where they're sitting on the toilet for 30 minutes, um, up to 30 minutes at a time and having a five minute break after success. So what mom has recorded in her first little box on the sheet, sitting in break set one, did elimination occur? So did they pee or poop? Yes. Um, and it says below it, if no, give a two minute break from the toilet, then skip to sitting in break set two. I'm gonna touch on that in a minute. But for now, all you need to know is, yes, they peed. Mom wrote the time, which was 7.41. She recorded whether it was pee or poop, it was pee. She recorded that was in the toilet, so it was successful, and she recorded the reward she gave. It's really important to keep track of that too, especially if you're gonna use a few different things. You wanna know what you gave when, so you can look back and see what's working well. Um, it helps you identify some troubleshooting areas later, if necessary. Okay, so I hope everybody's good with this first step. So again, just looking back, 741, he had a P. Mom gave him that five minute break. So, and he enjoyed his new Matchbox car, which was really cool. Um, strongly recommend if you're using something like cars, it's probably really great to give a new one in a package, not one they've ever seen before, just to be sure it's gonna be really extra exciting. So Joey, he was excited. This worked really well. He's thrilled with his Matchbox car. So, at, so remember his P was at 741. He had a five minute break. It's 7.46 a.m. and he's back on the toilet and this time he's looking at some books. So mom's gonna keep changing up what he's doing on the toilet to keep him engaged. Last time he was listening to music with headphones, this time he's doing books. She's kind of trying out some different stuff to see what's gonna keep him happy on the toilet. So it's 7.46, he's sitting. 7.51, he pees again. Very cool, that's success number two. So again, as soon as the pee leaves his body, a reinforcer appears. Mom gives it right away. She's got it, She's her hand is on it, 
as in, in its hidden location as the pea's coming out of, of Joey's body. And then as soon as it's done, the item's presented. Like he sees it and the, the association between the pea and the, the item is undeniable. Like he sees it right away, right? And then again, mom's gonna set her five minute timer and give Joey a five minute break from the toilet. So I hope you're following me here, right? The pattern is he's sitting on the toilet for up to 30 minutes, but what you're seeing with Joey is He's peeing way before that 30 minutes elapses so far, which is really cool. So mom knows, hey, I'm giving him enough liquid. Remember one of the things we talked about this morning was how important it is in rapid toilet training to ensure a ton of liquid is being ingested. We wanna have many, many learning opportunities. So, so far, Joey's mom is nailing it with the liquid. He's having plenty because he's peeing well before the 30 minutes elapses. Um, so that's really cool. So, um, Let's just backtrack here. So we had his second success at 7.51. Mom set her five minute timer and gave Joey a five minute break from the toilet. Then at 7.56, so she's really, she's sticking to those times. It's really critical to stay on track. So it's 7.56, he's had his five minute break. He's back on the toilet listening to music again. So again, she's mixing up what he's, what he's having on the toilet. So keep him engaged. And this time it takes a little longer at 8.20. So he's getting, he's been on there at 7.56. It's 8.20, he's getting to the end of his 30 minutes. He has a poop in the toilet. Awesome, that is success number three. So remember I said in rapid toilet training, we work on pee and poop together. Success can mean pee or poop or both. So the, he's in this phase one, Joey's had three successes in a row and he had two peas and one poop. Great. So he's had his three successes in a row. Mom's gonna again immediately deliver her reinforcer and give Joey his five minute break. So that's what this looks like on our data sheet here. So let's follow along together. Um, remember that first P was at 741, it was in the toilet, he got a matchbox car. The second P was at 751, perfect, it was in the toilet, things are going great, he got a small bowl of gummy bears. Awesome, so mom, in this situation, mom had a bunch of ideas for what reinforcers might be right for Joey, and she, he's, a, you know, he's got a lot of things he likes, so she's just presenting to him different things that she knows are going to be pretty good, but keeping some variety. Um, she might find over time, oh, he's, one seems to be like what he's clamoring for. You know, you kind of can tell, oh, he's, I'm giving him the gummy bears, but he's kind of looking, where, where's the car? So you can see that pattern is happening here. Mom gave him a matchbox car, gummy bears, and then she went back to a matchbox car. So she might have thought, oh, these might be a little bit better, so I'm going to stick with them for a while. This is very different for every, every trainee. Um, we can't tell you, have one thing and stick to it, or you have to use lots of different things as your rewards. It's really different for everybody, and it's something that you kind of have to make that call based on your knowledge of the trainee. Um, and we'll talk a lot more about reinforcers throughout the rest of the presentation. I'll touch on that uh, a lot after this. So anyway, as, as far as uh, following the data sheet goes, he's had three successes, doesn't matter, summer pee, one is poop. Um, he's ready to move to the next phase. So you can see to the side of your data sheet, it says three consecutive successes, question mark. If yes, you're gonna pull out your next data sheet. You're ready for phase two. So that's really cool, good start. Remember, phase two is now they're gonna sit on the toilet for a maximum of 25 minutes and they're gonna have a 10 minute break after a success. So in Joey's situation, remember, he's had his three successes, we're ready for phase two. So the PDF that you have has each phase's data sheet kind of back to back. So um, it's hard to predict how many of each phase's data sheet you should print before you start. Some kids, it, or trainees, it takes a while to move through the phases, other it's quick like Joey. So just have a bunch printed and organized so that when you're working with this trainee, you can pull out the ones you need. Because these are a really great guide for how to move through and which timings are which. Um, so that, you know, when you're in the middle of doing this with your trainee, you don't have to go, what, what was Katie saying about this? Like, how do I, can I see the videos? Like, how do I figure this out? Just look at your sheet. It'll guide you through uh, the timings and which go together. So um, Joey's ready for phase two. Very cool. When the next time he's back on the toilet, after he has that five minute break where he got his last matchbox car after his poop, he, mom's gonna now set her timer for 25 minutes. So that's the maximum amount of time he's gonna be on the toilet next time. He returned to the toilet to start phase two. So that's our 25 minutes on the timer at 8.25 a.m. 
he's rolling. This is 8.25 a.m. He's doing amazing. 8.30 a.m. He had another pee. Very cool. So mom's now going to deliver the, her reinforcer again. As soon as the pee has left Joey's body, the reinforcer appears. And she's going to set her timer for a 10-minute break. So now, like I, I mentioned this a little bit before, before we had our lunch break, over time, slowly in this process, the break time extends, the time on the toilet decreases, right? So now there's more steps for Joey in being successful. Not only does he have to kind of release the pee or poop while he's on the toilet, relax the necessary muscles, he also has to keep those muscles contracted when he's off the toilet. Um, so it just gets progressively slowly a little bit harder over time. That's why we do these little five minute changes um, as the, they're more successful. So again, at 8.30 a.m., Joey's had a success number one in phase two. So it may be slightly confusing that I'm calling it, calling it success number one because it's actually his fourth success of the day, but now we're talking about phase two as its own little chunk, right? So it's his first success in phase two. So he has his 10 minute break from 8.30 to 8.40. At 8.40, he returns to the toilet. Mom sets her timer for 25 minutes and Joey's looking at books. So she's kind of found he's liking looking at books. That's what's keeping him on the toilet, that's great. It's 9.05 a.m., her timer's sounding, and Joey is still on the toilet and has not yet peed. So I don't have a mentimeter for this, but think to yourself for a moment, what's mom going to do? That's right, it's a two-minute break. So she's going to give him a two-minute break, preferably in the bathroom, just stretch and move around and sit back down. Um, so that's what this would look like on your data sheet. So you can see he's had, this is now a phase two data sheet. So I, I could only show you a chunk on the PowerPoint to make it still legible. But when you're looking at your own data sheet that you've downloaded the PDF of, you can see at the top it says phase two. So mom's pulled out her phase two data sheet. The first P success in phase two was at 8.30 a.m. It happened in the toilet. She gave him 10 gummy bears. And then in the next set, which is what we just talked about, remember he was on the toilet from 8.40 to 9.05, no pee, no poop. All mom did was check no in that box. You can see where that is, right? So that's okay. She's, she, what, like I mentioned, she had him stand up and stretch, move around, dance and wiggle a bit for two minutes really close to the bathroom in the bathroom preferably. I say in the bathroom preferably because the size of bathrooms varies immensely. Like when we work in nice big bathrooms, we can sometimes have a good break area off to a side. Um, you know, some, some trainees like to like stand in the bathtub and stretch or dance around a little bit. But um, yeah, sometimes we work in little powder rooms and we just, you have to get out of there for, uh, for them to be able to stretch and wiggle a little bit. So yeah, after that two minutes, it's 9.07 a.m. Joey returns to the toilet and mom sets her timer. Again, she's still at 25 minutes. At 9.08, Joey pees, hooray. So this is success number two in this phase. That's right, this is success number two. This is a bit of a snag sometimes, so listen really carefully to this part. Um, when I say you need three consecutive successes in order to move between phases, all the consecutive means is that there was no accident in between. They don't have to do it every time, like in every 25 minute timer that I'm setting, they're peeing on the toilet every time they go on. It just means there was no accident in between. So really you could have a scenario where, you know, Joey had his, Joey had his last success at 8.30 and then mom keeps bringing him back, back on for 25 minutes, he doesn't pee, two minute break. Oh, again, 25 minutes, he doesn't pee, two minute break. Again, 20 minutes, he doesn't pee, two minute break. And then he finally pees after like four or five tries. That would still be two consecutive successes because there was no accident in between. So what we're looking at and how we decide if the, the learner's ready to move on is the kind of ratio of successes to accidents. That's what we really care about. If they're holding it a bit and um, they're not you know, successful every time they sit on the toilet, but they're not having an accident either, that's fine. It still counts as a success in terms of um, con consecutive and being ready to move to the next phase. I hope that part makes sense. Um, but again, remember all the pillars of rapid toilet training work together. So if it's three or four times you're doing a toilet sitting, the whole sitting goes by, your timer is going off, no pee, two minute break. Again, your whole sitting, oh, there's no, no pee, your timer goes off, two minute break. You're not giving them enough 
liquid, right? You're not giving them enough liquid. So if that's happening a lot, you could have a problem here. Um, you got to try upping the liquid or again, rapid toilet training might not be the right approach and that's okay. Um, you've learned some things here that you can use for the long way approach too, right? Um, but I, again, these, these components are so key. They, they have to all be in place for this procedure to happen. Okay, so back to Joey here. So he had his second success at 9.08 a.m., right? And even though there was a sitting before that where nothing happened, it's his second consecutive success of this phase two where he's sitting for 25 minutes maximum. So again, mom delivers the reinforcer. When does she deliver it? As soon as he's done peeing, the moment the pee has finished leaving his body. She gives that reinforcer and a 10 minute break. Joey returns to the toilet. It's 9.18 a.m. and he pees at 9.19 a.m. So this is success number three. Mom delivers the reinforcer and Joey gets a 10 minute break. So remember in this phase, the breaks are always gonna be 10 minutes. So we've got our three consecutive successes here. So this is what it would look like on our data sheet. So you can see again, these are the data sheets that say scheduled sittings, phase two data sheet at the top. They're in your package, your uh, PDF you can download. So remember, we had a success at 8.30 a.m. See the little star beside it? That's the one near the top of the screen. Then we had a sitting where nothing happened. That one has a no, that's okay. The next, um, the next uh, sitting, he had a success at 9.08 a.m. And this time he got an ice cream sandwich. So mom was mixing it up. Remember I said that's sometimes something that we do if we're not totally sure or we think this trainee has lots of different options, totally fine to mix them up um, if that's what's gonna work for them. And then you can see over to the right of the screen, there's, uh, it's like broken up on another page, right? So that's okay, it happens sometimes. The still three consecutive successes, even though it's shown across two data sheets. So we have our success at 8.30, we have a, a sitting with no success, that's okay. We have a success at 9.08, and we have another success at 9.19. Great, we have our three consecutive successes for phase two. Um, awesome, you can also see that liquid consumption tracking line on the bottom again, a really, really key piece. You can see too there that um, Joey had, he finished uh, 100 milliliters of liquid at 826, mom wrote, and then the next one wasn't till nine o'clock. So she might've looked at that and thought, oh, I totally slowed down giving liquid. That's why he, I had a sitting there where he didn't pee, right? So that's why that's there. Keep you on track with your liquid. You've got to track it. Again, I swear a time warp occurs when you're doing this procedure. You know, the, the clock starts spinning in a weird way or time's going, you don't know, right? You kind of you lose the sense of when they last had a drink. You have to track it or you'll, you'll lose it. Joey sits on the toilet and mom sets her 20 minute timer, which you all just told me she was gonna do. So that's fabulous. At 9.40 a.m., Joey pees. So that's success number one in this phase, phase three. Mom delivers the reinforcer and gives Joey a 15 minute break. So remember these breaks are getting a little longer, right? Every time, not only does the time on the toilet decrease, the time off the toilet increases. At 9.45 a.m., Joey has an accident. So he's standing in the kitchen and he pees a little bit. So he might be having his reinforcer. He might just be kind of, you know, he wants to run around the house. He's been in the bathroom a lot, whatever. He has a little bit of pee at 9.45 a.m. Mom is watching him so closely, right? Even when she's had all the success so far, a really key part of um, making the procedure continue to go well is again, you are on it. You are not, again, checking Instagram. You're not making a quick phone call. You're not gonna chop up some veggies to prep for dinner, nothing. Like you're on it, you're watching that kid, that trainee so closely the entire day so that you can react and help them learn, right? So again, like I said, you may want an assistant so that you can, you know, do other little things throughout the day. You may need someone to help you watch. So mom brings Joey back to the toilet. Again, I'll, I'll talk about how to do that a little bit more in a minute, but we're focusing on the schedule right now. And she sets her timer for 20 minutes on the toilet again right away. So she's not gonna let that whole 15 minute break go by after Joey's had an accident. Even if it was a big accident and it looked like, whoa, he fully emptied his bladder in the kitchen, 
there's no way he's going to pee when I get him back to the toilet right away. You still take them back to the toilet because you're teaching him this is what happens when you pee. This is where the pee goes, right? It's sort of a response that, um, that helps him to learn. And again, I'll talk about that in a minute. So yeah, the, the, as soon as the accident happens, Joey's mom helps him rush back to the toilet and start the next 20 minute sitting right away. So this is what that's gonna look like on our data sheet. So remember this is, we're, we're pulling out a different data sheet for each phase. So we're at our phase three data sheet now. It says phase three at the top. And like I mentioned, these data sheets have a little sort of cheat, cheat sheet for you at the top. That's how long the timer is set when they sit on the toilet, how long the timer is set for a break. It's all kind of laid out, so they're a really nice little guide. Um, a gift from Pat and I to you as you implement this. We really think it'll help. So um, again, Joey had a successful pee at 9.40 a.m. And then look at down at box number two there. He had um, an accident at 9.45 out of toilet, and mom made a little note there of where it happened. That can be a nice little thing to have too, because you might find a pattern over time where there's a certain situation where the accidents tend to happen. And it just helps you to have that info so you can react and look at things a little bit more clearly. Um, so it's nice to note too where the accident happened, a um, little bit on the circumstances. So that's what the data sheet's gonna look like at this phase. Um, yeah, so we've got one success, we've got one accident. And at nine, so he's, he's sorry, just to clarify, the accident was at 9.45, he's back on the toilet right away. Like he's on the toilet, it's still 9.45, that's how fast he got back to the toilet. At 9.50, so five minutes later, he has another P. This is success number one. So even though he just had a success and an accident in phase two, we're now at success number one again. This is where that consecutive thing comes in. So this is success number one because we need to reset. There was an accident. So we need to get three successes in a row before we move to our next phase. So um, phase three, just reset, right? We're starting it again. So mom delivers her reinforcer again right away, and then she sets her timer for a 15-minute break. From there, he, so he has a 15-minute break from 9.50 to 10.05. Joey pees again immediately at 10.05 when he's brought back to the toilet. Success number two, beautiful. Um, mom then delivers a reinforcer and sets her timer for a 15-minute break. He's back on the toilet at 10.20, 10.30 a.m. he pees. Success number three, beautiful. So we just had our kind of quick in succession, three successes in phase three. Right? So again, even though there was a success, then an accident, we had to kind of reset, restart phase three, get our three successes in a row. And now we have three in a row. I'm sure you know that the next thing we need to do is move to the next phase, right? So there's that little table I'll, uh, I'll show you again in a sec that shows you what your next phase would be. So it's like five minutes less on the toilet, five minutes more on a break. Okay, so yeah, that's what I just, the example I just gave there was, um, what you do if there's one accident, right? You, um, you keep going until you get your three in a row. But if you get two consecutive accidents, that's showing you, eh, we might be moving a little too fast here. We need to back up to make sure they're really getting this. In that case, you would go back to the previous phase. So say, um, Joey, after he had that accident in the kitchen, he had another one, like a, the, in his, you know, two minute break after his sitting, he stood up to stretch and he peed again in the bathroom, then mom would know, okay, two accidents in a row means I gotta make sure you're getting this, I'm gonna back it up a little bit. And she would go back to the previous phase, which in that case is phase two. So she'd set her timer for 25 minutes when they went back to the bathroom. Um, another, like, you know how I said, if you're having a bunch of times in a row where they're, they're sitting, they sit for the entire time and your timer goes off and there was no pee or poop, so they get a two minute break. And then it happens again. They sit for the entire timing of the phase, there's a two minute break, no pee or poop. You know they're not having enough liquid. If they have two accidents in a row, you might, you might not be watching closely enough on the breaks 
because, um, yeah, if they're having two big accidents where they totally empty their bladder and you're not able to kind of interrupt and help them get some of it in the toilet, you know, okay, I got to regroup. I'm on Instagram or something, right? You have to make sure that you're really, really focused. Um, I'll talk in a minute about the accident procedure and what that should look like. But these kind of things are like that sort of checks for you as you go through. Is this flowing the way it should, right? So two accidents in a row is a bit, uh -uh. like is the implementer, I mean the, the trainer, not the trainee, on it as much as they need to be. Okay, so I'm gonna leave the Joey example there because even though we haven't gone through all the phases, I've given you kind of each scenario that can happen. So, um, you know, the rules sort of remain, right, as you move through these phases. There's the fact that if there's one accident, then you reset, you need three in a row to move to the next phase. There's the fact that if there's two accidents in a row, you need to back up to the previous phase. And there's the fact that if they don't pee or poop for the entire time on the toilet that's listed there for your phase, you give a two minute break. So as we progress through these phases, the child or the learner, the trainee, is slowly mastering this. So by the time you get to phase six, which is five minutes on the toilet, 30 minutes break following success, what we usually see is they're starting to pee really quickly when they get to the toilet. The learning is occurring. They're going, I want that reinforcer. I just gotta pee to get it. Usually we see by phase six, they pee within a minute of sitting. They're really starting to get it, right? So that's a good sign. And um, we call it like the latency to, to pee from sitting on the toilet to the time they pee. 